My Friends Went to See the Rings of Power has become the new My Dad Works for Nintendo. Let me explain. So, right now we're seeing the embargo and all of that stuff kind of get lifted off of the Rings of Power. And ultimately, it's interesting seeing the tweets. Because so far, all of the tweets, all of the feedback, everyone's screaming something positive, are all basically saying the same thing. To the point, barring a word change, it's the same language, the same phrasing, even the same grammar. It's visually stunning. I had nothing to it. It's all very robotic and it's very shallow. There's no actual context to what they're saying and they're not giving anything away. I had this exchange with someone on Twitter the other day and this person will rename nameless, but they were like, well, if, um, are you going to delete this video when the series comes out? And we had a bit of an exchange. I was taking the piss. So I decided to be naughty and use a little tool to look up their IP address and their email. You know, if you work for major publishing things that I won't say the name of here because that would be doxing, maybe don't use your work address or get a VPN because <laughs> it's knowing who you work for and where your account comes from basically told me everything. But also the fact that this Twitter exchange was near identical to other ones I've been seeing on a loop, on a repetitive loop, and I find that fascinating. So it tends to be this endless circle jerk of it's visually stunning, but there's no actual depth, there's no actual conversation, no one's talking about the characterization, no one's talking about where anything goes, no one's talking about anything to do with that. It's just all about the visuals. And I know we live in an age where most modern media is made for 14 year olds with ADHD, fast cuts, really shiny CGI, almost no plots. Hello, the Transformers movies. And I think, and I've said this before as well in other videos, that it doesn't matter if this thing is the best thing since sliced bread. Doesn't. Tolkien fans, real Tolkien fans have rejected it. And another comment I keep seeing is, well, Peter Jackson changed things. You, know, you didn't like the Peter Jackson, you must hate the Peter Jackson movies. There's a difference. Peter Jackson respected the source material, but he also changed things for the sake of storytelling. Maybe to add, get rid of the one-shot characters, get a few, get some of the other characters bought in. But he also had the full rights, so he also bought in some of the other stuff that isn't necessarily in the book. But he did that intentionally, just to, ch just to bring that in. You know, a character showing up for one scene is not really... Po it's pointless in film. And certain things were changed just slightly to f kind of fit the narrative of film. Amazon have rewritten it. They haven't tweaked things, they haven't done anything. They've rewritten it. They've created something more or less original, including characters' backstories, and with in-universe law, there is a massive difference between those two things. And if you are too thick to understand that, maybe you're too thick to understand Tolkien's work. Let's be blunt about it. Like idiots, <laughs> it's like common for the masses. You know, these same people think Brie Larson is an amazing actress. On the other side of it, and I'm just watching this rhetoric play out and I'm watching this kind of willing destruction, there's now this mainstream media rejection of Tolkien's work outside of Lord of the Rings. They're moaning about the Silmarillion, which is a history book. It is not a novel. And I think a lot of people think it is a novel. I'm looking very fluffy today. It's not. It's a history book. And the Unfinished Tales are the same. They, they are history books mixed with short stories and legends and so on. They're a very different style. They are not difficult reading if you read if you know how to read a history book. They're also not designed to be read in one sitting. You're meant to take sections and refer back to them. You don't have to read them necessarily in order either. It depends on where your context is and what you're looking for. Again, Amazon don't have the rights to this. The, um, the timeline compression, I still don't understand how they're going to tell this story. I think in what doing what they've done, they've taken the philosophy out of Tolkien's work, and they've taken a lot of the, the more religious themes out, I think, just going by some of the leaks and information. It's interesting that the leaks aren't 
there's no real leaks, even though this thing has been screened in cinemas. And the problem there is I think 99% of the people that have got the privilege of seeing this aren't the general public, they're journalists. When I saw pictures, there were a lot of people in nice dresses and suits and all of this stuff. And it's like, you're journalists, you're writers, you're people that work in the industry. I bet you were given your ticket before, long before this even started, let's be real. And I'm betting some of you were paid to be there. Because I keep seeing the same copy and pasted um, feedback, the same copy and pasted stuff on this endless loop, I do find that worrying. I find it overall, again, the rhetoric. We saw it with uh, Disney Star Wars to a lesser extent. We've seen it with recent Marvel movies. We've seen it with recent um, things such as the Star Wars cruise ship debacle. There is a copy and paste feedback that is almost universally identical. Even if the wording is slightly different or a word is changed, it's interesting when you start searching these tweets, because there are engines, you can go on them, you can type it, you can copy and paste the tweet in and find all the rest. <sighs> Twitter bots are a thing. Also, and I mean this, the Stan accounts on Twitter are the weirdest things. Your entire personality revolves around this franchise. And just because people don't like something or criticise it does not mean we are ists of some kind or misogynists. It doesn't work that way. You can criticise something that you are consuming as a viewer. You can criticise something you've spent a lot of your life reading and studying. That's how it works. Criticism is not, and I repeat this, criticism is nothing to do with race, sexuality, gender or skin colour. You can criticise at anything. No one is free of it. And just people getting really, what I'm seeing is people getting really defensive and really on edge and they're trying to turn it around so it f comes back to you. Why are you criticising it? Oh, is it your internalised misogyny? Oh, shut up. You know, th there are people on the, Twitter is a brain drain. I mean, there are people on Twitter who genuinely I don't think would pass a basic IQ test for a five-year-old or a comprehension test, let alone a reading comprehension test. My God. It's just, what I find funny about this whole thing is it's the same loop of copy and pasted information. People are saying a lot and saying nothing. That is a problem. And that, I think, kind of tells you everything you need to know. This conversation is basically null and void at this point because no one's saying a thing. It's just empty noise in an empty void. And people are literally coming all over it. Vaseline in hand. But yeah, just overall such a bizarre situation and such a strange one to witness, especially being on the um, opposite end. But also the blockchaining that some of the people are doing right now is hilarious. Like, I'm not interacting with anything because of blockchaining and I can't be bothered to switch to my ghost accounts to see what's going on. So, you know... By the way, if you're a Twitter user, get a ghost account. Nothing on it, just blank, noise, background, don't interact. It's very useful. So yeah, tell me what you think in the comments below, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.